Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with five things in the Pro Tools user interface that you may or may not recognise. I'm going to be concentrating on things that happen in the rulers up here. And there are some symbols and icons that you can see up there that you might not necessarily know what they mean. I'm going to start at the start, quite literally, with the song start marker, which is this red little triangle here. What the song start marker does is it establishes a starting tempo. That's why I've got this little 95 next to it for 95 BPM. What you'll find happens if you move it is that all the sample-based information, the sample-based tracks denoted by these little blue clocks down here, they'll be unaffected by that. But anything that's tick-based, denoted by this little green metronome, that will be affected and those things will move. I'll show you what I mean. And you see what happened there? All of the tick-based stuff, the MIDI and a uh, couple of audio tracks are moving but the sample based stuff isn't. That doesn't have to happen. If you hold control and shift or start and shift on a PC and move it, then you can move the marker without moving the other stuff. And there you can see it isn't a red triangle, just half it was cut off, it's a, it's a red diamond. So there we are, song start marker. Next up, I'm gonna talk about, uh, well, this is to do with dynamic transport. Dynamic transport's a relatively big subject, but there's a couple of things that you'll see in there if you find yourself in it that you might think, well, what's that? I've never seen that before. I'm going to make uh, an edit selection here. I'm going to make, I don't know, edit selection like that. Um, actually, I'm, I've just made a timeline selection, but because my edit and timeline selections are linked, I've got a corresponding edit selection. That's an important distinction. We'll come back to that. And uh, what I can do is I can go into Dynamic Transport by pressing uh, Command and Control and P on a Mac or control and start and P on a PC. And there we are, two things happen. The first thing you'll see is that this doubles in width and you get this funny little blue triangle. This is the start playback cursor, or indicator, symbol, whatever you want to call it. And what that means is just this is where playback will start from and this is the selection that will loop because dynamic transport automatically puts you into loop playback. So if I press play, great but if I move this so if I move it outside of that range actually we don't want to wait so I'll make it slightly shorter I'll make a one bar loop like so so we've now got basically pre-roll playback starts from here and then it will loop around here if I make this longer go back to quite a long loop like so and i want to check the loop point well if i start playback from here i'll have to listen the whole way through just to listen to just what happens between here and here this is where this can help and this is what i use it for quite a lot if i move it to here playback will start here i listen to one bar or however i've got it set up and then i'll hear the loop point and i don't have to hit, sit through the whole loop so there's a useful application for this dynamic transport playback cursor there's a couple of other things that happened while I was in there. And that takes on to the next thing. Um, this blue arrow is kind of interesting because like this, it's a single arrow. That's my timeline selection. And this flashing line here is the insertion point. It's a timeline selection that's the start and the end of which are in, both in the same place. But if I make a selection up here, they're now spread apart. So that's the beginning of the timeline selection and the end of the timeline selection. So what are these things over here, these yellow things with the dot? These are the edit selection in and out points. And this introduces this idea that in Pro Tools, there are two kinds of selection. There's an edit selection, which is made down here. And there's a timeline selection, which is made up here. Press play. It's the timeline selection that'll play. However, most of the time, we don't have to worry about that just because these two types of selection are usually linked. It's this button over here called link timeline and edit selection. And if that's on, then the distinction between these two things falls away. You automatically unlink timeline edit selection if you're in dynamic transport mode. Whole different subject. I'm going to come out of dynamic transport mode. Look, they're linked again. And now, wherever I click down here, that's what gets played. And wherever I come up here, that's what gets selected as an edit selection. Okay, next, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, actually. And uh, then I'm going to start playback. I'm going to start playback just over here, over here at the edge. And something's happened there. Two things have happened, actually, just because you might be expecting to see 
scrolling happen and page scrolling where the cursor reaches the edge of the page and then it updates and starts coming over from the left. I don't like that. Quite a lot of people I speak to who've been using Pro Tools for a while, they, they don't worry about edit window scrolling just because sometimes it can interfere with what you're trying to do. So I've got it switched off. And the reason I've got it switched off is because there's a very easy way to make the, the screen catch up with where the cursor is. However, something else happened as well. If you're watching the top right, a little blue triangle appeared. What that's doing is it's telling me in which direction the off-screen playback cursor is. Is it to the, the right or to the left? It's more than just a visual indicator though, just because if you click on it, it'll take you to where your playback cursor is and it'll center it on screen. You might wonder why I like to leave edit window scrolling switched off. It's because you can hit the down and right arrows at any time and it will center your playback cursor on screen. And having the screen automatically scroll and update can take you away from parts of the screen you're working on when you're editing on the fly, which is something I do quite often. So I just let that disappear off screen. And there we go. I just hit it once and it updated to where the cursor had now got to. Okay, lastly, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about these. If I just make a, an edit selection like so, on the transport down here, we've got these pre and post roll flags. Now, if you're not in dynamic transport where you can set a, a pre roll using that blue triangle, you can set it any time you like just by hitting Command and K. If I hit Command and K, there we go. We don't actually have one set up at the moment, though. So what I might do here is I might dial in a pre-roll of one. And there we are. We get this little flag, a little pre-roll flag. I can get something the same to the other side. And now I end up with a post-roll flag. Now what happens is when I hit play, rather than the timeline selection playing, I'll get from the pre-roll through the timeline selection, then post-roll if it's enabled, so it'll play back past that. like so. And then by toggling Command and K, I can toggle pre and post roll like so. However, you can pick these up and move them. Of course you can. But another way to set them is to hold Option and then just click in the timeline. So if I want this to pick up and play pre-roll from just here, if I just press Option and click, there we go. Same with post roll. If I wanted it for some reason to post roll right out to here, there we are. And then I can toggle that pressing Command and K. So there's five cryptic symbols that you might see up in the rulers in Pro Tools that if you weren't already familiar with them, hopefully now you understand what they are and what they achieve.